What's up, everyone? It's Ben Alonzo from ultratechlife.com out here at Orlando Hamcation 2025 in beautiful Orlando, Florida at the Central Florida Fairgrounds. It's about 80 degrees out here, and it's partly cloudy. It's slightly breezy, which makes it perfect for strolling around out here at the outdoor swap meet where you can see lots of radio history, 1980s, 1990s. I've always said one of my favorite things about coming out to these ham fests, which are like an electronics trade show slash amateur radio trade show so much history is out here and i love the stuff from world war ii i saw some stuff from the 1930s out here and had some interesting conversations so i talked with a few people about am radio for example think of all the changes less stations today but way more towers way more antennas transceivers utilities in the modern city that means so much radio frequency interference can you even receive anything with the older gear is it even worth it so guys like this come in and refurbish the vintage equipment this guy added bluetooth auxiliary input so it gives some additional utility to the older stuff so it lives on history can live on Speaking of history, how many of you remember the heydays of Radio Shack? They used to sell antennas, ham radios, believe it or not, back in the day. So in the 1990s, if you owned a VHF UHF scanner, you can pick up every police, fire, EMS call, the first cordless phones, baby monitors, even the unencrypted cell phone service. When that first came out, meant you can hear some juicy conversations. It was fun to just listen. My first scanner was a radio shack pro 34 unit so when i see these older scanner radios it brings back so many memories and it's kind of sad because we've transitioned from analog radio stuff to digital trunking and much of it is encrypted which means these radios the older things have limited use not much you can hear so ham radio is still around as of early 2025 there's just over 700,000 u.s amateur radio operators so it's still around, not the same as it was when I first got in to amateur radio. In the 90s, as a kid, I was interested in storm spotting, storm chasing, skywarn, things like that. So I got into emergency communications back then. Radio, amateur, civil, emergency service, for example. It's still around, but it's transitioned too. So at Hamcation, there were forums going on where they were talking about digital emergency communications, things like mesh networks. IP nodes. So ham radio is still here, but a lot of it is transition. There's a lot of new stuff here. Some people are happy about that. Some people aren't, but the pace of technology is so fast. I can also say that when you come out to these ham fests, you'll see commercial gear, very rugged radios that can be reprogrammed for ham radio use. You get ideas when you come out to these large ham fests. If you're into disaster preparedness, think of the shack in the box stuff. That's pretty cool for hiking, for RV use as well. If you're dealing with HOA nightmare scenarios or apartment life where you can't drill or you need to run cabling through windows or doors, there were solutions at Hamcation. So this was pretty cool to see. There are still organizations that'll get you encouraged, involved, explore ham radio. I've always said as a science professor, embrace science. Let's get people interested in exploring science and technology. And there are still plenty of organizations to help you do that. Whenever I see these paddle keyers, I think of Morse code, the history of communications, the telegraph in the United States and around the world, where we were then and where we are today, the amazing software stuff, propagation, digital logbook, satellite. Speaking of that, check out this from ICOM. ICOM is known for providing a lot of the amateur radio communications as well as some of the emergency communication devices for emergency communications, the one thing that you look at is the most common denominator, which usually becomes an analog radio system. While there are different digital networks out there, as well as different technologies, unless you have an interoperability box that bridges these various communication types, you're going to go to an analog type situation. Depending on the topography, terrain, and the buildings, the selection of either VHF or UHF becomes critical. So the, the nice thing about a push-to-talk solution like the SAT-100 is that this is a one-to-many device. These radios can be dispatched to people in an emergency situation, whether it's a recovery or um, a rescue situation. Anything above an eight-degree 
horizon, you're going to have a satellite communication. We do have an app that you connect your smart device to the radio over Bluetooth, and you can do keyboard-to-keyboard -to -keyboard text messaging as well as voice communications. To find more information about this radio, you can actually use your favorite search engine for the ICOM, I-C-O-M, SAT-100, S-A-T-100. It's amazing to think about the changes for both ham radio and the scanner world over the past two decades. When I first got into amateur radio as a kid in the 90s, I didn't have a lot of money. And there wasn't Amazon, so your choices were very limited back then. And it was often used equipment that I'd have to buy when I got into HF. The boat anchors would be the number one thing I would look at, like the Heath kit and Collins gear that you see in this video. It's very cool. It has a personality. I've seen a lot of this in movies. I've seen radios like this used in the 90s among the news reporter world. They would monitor HF frequencies for world events, things like war, so they can report on current events that were going on all over the world. I call this the Mayberry looking radio. I've seen these in movies. That's a TR-106 six meter transceiver on the left and a receiver on the right. It's amazing, frankly, that this classic vintage gear, the Heath kit, the Collins gear, is still around and much of it still works. There are pieces of history. In ham radio, you can build cool antennas. There are lots of parts out here at these larger ham fests, especially like Hamcation, to give you ideas for your next project, the next thing you're going to explore. The entertaining vehicles that you'll see out here are amazing. I encourage you to go around and look at these. I can't imagine having all of the gear and antennas electronics mounted inside the car and leave it in a densely populated city. I'm afraid somebody would steal everything you would own. It's amazing to come out here and see so much gear, new and used, the latest and greatest, and the old classic vintage gear. You get a lot of ideas. There's plenty to explore with ham radio. The organizations that are out there as well, we have plenty of spectrum. So if you're still into the old analog things, it's still out there. If you want to explore the new things, new is pretty cool remote mount heads are very common these days software defined radio bluetooth usb connectivity all of those things are really cool to explore plenty of digital modes out there so both the new and old things are still around for you to explore it's not the same as the 90s like the two meter popularity repeaters that were everywhere all the people talking on the two meter repeaters and simplex it's changed so have you found something cool in the video? Do you know what all of this gear is? Can you identify the scanners, the transceivers that you see in this video? Did you come out to Hamcation on a treasure hunt? Did you find something cool? Comment in the comment section below. And if you didn't get out to Hamcation, did you see something cool? Have you noticed the changes over the past 20 years in both amateur radio and the scanner world? Comment in the comment section below what you think of those changes. And if you love unique science and tech stuff, check out ultratechlife.com. As always, I encourage you to explore science, explore technology. Thanks for watching the video and see you soon.